Here, now, listen, no, don't twitter. I'll just go, no. I'll just get myself comfy. Ooh, everything sticks to you when it gets warm. Anyway, here, listen, no. What's happened, you see? They've asked me to come on here. Well, cheek, this is a cheek, I can tell you. They've asked me to come on here and, and, and do a joke and introduce the next turn while he's, get, while he's off getting changed, mimicking. Yes, yes. I mean, what a cheek. I should say so. I would, no, I mean, but I wouldn't mind, but I'm not well. I'm not well. I think, no, I'm at a funny age. <laughs> No, well, you see, no, I, sh I shouldn't be standing here tonight. I couldn't get a seat. Yes, anyway. <laughs> don't nod off, don't nod off. It's so good. And anyway, then they said to me, they said, look, because I, I went to the doctor, you see, and I said to the nurse, I said, uh, I said, could I see Dr. Finley? She said, Dr. Who? I said, all right, he'll do. <laughs> No, but you see, and I went inside, I said, Doctor, I said, look, I said, oh, I've got, the, I've got I've, I'm funny, I get these funny turns, because I do get these funny turns, you see, yes, I mean, I said, some days, some days, I think I'm a dog. He said, well, lie on the couch. I said, I'm not allowed on the couch. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, oh, I thought it was coming on to rain then for the moment. <laughs> it's what you call an applaud. Anyway. <laughs> Anyway, I said, I said, I said, I said, have you got anything else? He said, anything else? She said, I said, well, as a matter of fact, sometimes I think I'm a curtain. He said, well, pull yourself together. <laughs> so, anyway, he gave me, the, they did this examination, you say, did and, and the nurse, she grabbed one leg, and the doctor, he grabbed the other leg. I mean, I had a leg over there like that, and a leg over there like that. I did a leg over, I, 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 I thought, such a fool. Yes, such a fool, yes. Yes, yes. <laughs> You have a good laugh, dear. Have a good laugh. <laughs> Remember, somebody else is going to sit there tomorrow. Anyway. <laughs> so now, enjoy yourself. So, uh, what was I talking about? Oh, yes. So I had this leg over there like that, and a leg over there like that. I said to the doctor, I said, what happens now? He said, make a wish. <laughs> oh, boy, the Anyway, anyway, as I say, this fellow here, all right, all right, all right, I'm, I'm getting on with it, it's the producer here, what's it called, the Ammons, with the medal, yeah, nice, 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 nice man, no, no, nice man really, yes, very good to his wife, never goes home, anyway, <laughs> he's, he, no, because, no, no, because, they, no, no, don't, because I've got to introduce this next turn, and they're very good, I've seen a good turn, good turn, oh yes, good turn, ladies and gentlemen, five lovely people, reflections, yes. <laughs> you fools, that is the wrong music. <laughs> that is close. Good evening, Madame Mekad. But there is nothing on it. You were looking at the wrong side. <laughs> oh, Inspector Clouseau, I should have known, but that terrible accent threw me. Terrible accent? Yes, I thought you were from the Borges. Because <laughs> you not understand. Well, don't worry, nobody understands the Borges. <laughs> Who are you? My name is Martine. I am, how you say, a woman of the streets. Oh, I see a traffic rudder. <laughs> Why did you send for me? I'm a very busy man. I was at the Moulin Rouge questioning the dancers. Oh, what did you find out? Some can can, some can can. <laughs> you do not appreciate a little French joke? Oh, nonsense. I love Charles Aznavour. <laughs> but the reason I sent for you is Big Louis is trying to kill me. I need protection. You have nothing to fear. I am a master of the art of self-defense. <laughs> Try and eat me. <laughs> See how cleverly I blurked your pinch with my face? I have a black belt for karate. That is nothing. I have red brasses for my trousers. <laughs> and you can, Timmy. <laughs> but Big Louie could be spying on us. Perhaps I will close the curtain. Second thoughts, I would leave them up. What a charming little grammar fan. Oh, sacre bleu! It is a warning from Big Louis. 
No, no. It is a cider from the earth lesson. <laughs> I, I have a feeling we are being watched. It all depends on what is on the other channel. <laughs> but if we are being watched, perhaps it is the panting. The what? No, not the what, the panting. <laughs> oh, the panting. Well, that's what I said. I have a way of finding out for sure. <laughs> I see it all now. You do? Well, almost all. And it is just as I suspended, suspected. <laughs> you get your underwear from Marks and Spencer's. Uh, but what about the painting? I do not know where he gets his underwear. <laughs> but if I was going to hide in a place like this, I would probably choose a cupboard like this one. Oh. <laughs> it is the murderer! No, it is a Chinaman doing bad impersonations of Frankie Vaughan. <laughs> do not worry. I will deal with him. That will teach you to forget the soya sauce. Oh, loser, you are wonderful. It was nothing. <laughs> oh, loser, my hero. He will be killed. We are 25 stories up. Oh. <laughs> I fooled you. How did you survive that terrible drop? The ground broke my foot. Oh, <laughs> my hero. Oh, you thought I was closer, your hero? But I'm not, because tonight, Marty Kane, actress, singer, entertainer, comedian. <laughs> this is your life. Well, as a matter of fact, Damon, I fooled you because you thought I was Marty Kane, but... I am Michael Kane, and not a lot of people know that. <laughs> Well, uh, good evening and uh, welcome. Um, uh, I've got this, um, I've got this, um, <laughs> that sort of, isn't it? Tin of carrots. <laughs> That's my name, Jasper Carrot, you see. I don't think what they would have put up there if Lucia Ball had come on. <laughs> I've, uh, I've got this mate, you know, and he's, he's a nice bloke, but he's, how can I put it, he's, um, thick. You know, he, he once got a boil on his bottom and he stuck the plaster on the mirror. <laughs> and he, uh, he's always watching television, you know, always watching television. Mind you, I like television, you know, and I, I, I like things like, uh, Crossroads, you know. Um, I like it because I like the suspense, you know, sitting there wondering, is there a plot? <laughs> and, you know, if you don't like the programmes on ITV, and um, they haven't been very good recently anyway, but... <laughs> you, you know, you, you've got alternatives, BBC One, BBC Two, switch it off. You know, nobody ever thinks of that, switch it off. I mean, but our ass, we brew up during the programmes and watch the adverts. <laughs> you know, because they're very, they're sort of very humorous, some of the adverts. You know, especially the ones they do for you ladies, you know, like they, they've got a corset made out of Tupperware. <laughs> and holding the fat, but it keeps what you've got fresh. You know. <laughs> and, uh, you know, they, they do this other one, like, girls, try the rawhide bra. It rounds them up and heads them out. <laughs> You know, they do all that sort of thing. And then they've done some daft ones for us men as well. You know, like they did that one uh, for the razor blades. You remember years ago, this fella came on and said, I used to use ooh, ooh, razor blades, but I don't use ooh, ooh, razor blades anymore. I use another razor blade. I went in every shop in the country making a right burk of myself, asking for ooh, ooh, razor blades. <laughs> I went into this shop and said, have you got any ooh, ooh, razor blades? He said, ooh, ooh, off. He was very rude. <laughs> It was only yesterday I found out what they use ooh, ooh, razor blades for. You use them in hospitals for shaving your ooh, ooh, that's what they use. Oh, hello. What a 
gay program. <laughs> do, you know, I, do you know why they asked me to do this? No, they came up and they said, would you like to do this program? <laughs> I said, do Jack and Ori tell a story? I said, well, what sort of story do you want me to tell? They said, well, tell a fairy tale. <laughs> I said, they only know me life story. I said, that's what we mean, tell a fairy tale. <laughs> but I've had a very, I've had a very, I've had a, I've had, oh, I've had an interesting life. I really have. I really have. <laughs> My hair's gone all limp. Anyway. <laughs> no, I was nearly born three times, you know. Well, my mother kept changing her mind. <laughs> and the midwife hadn't got the presence of mind to set traps. Anyway. <laughs> Jack, you were the trouble, didn't you, Jack? Anyway, I'm, are you sitting comfortably? I hope you are, because I'm not. It's these suede underpants, they're killing me. <laughs> Do you know, I've been looking all over for that brooch. I really have. Look, see. Anyway, I'm going to tell you my story, and you know, I've had so many wonderful jobs, I really have. Because this is where I really started as a hairdresser, you know. Oh, yes. Next. <laughs> Oh, look in here. <laughs> oh, yes, I've, I've, I've had all the showbiz people coming here, you know. Rolf Harris was one of my best customers. And he doesn't come in anymore. Not since I got his didgeridoo caught him a curling tongue. <laughs> Bob Monkhouse used to come in here. And then the Bob Monkhouse coming in, he said, I want you to cut my hair like my act. So I gave him a blue rinse. <laughs> I've done Topol's beard, Ernie Wise's legs, and Gerald Navarro's moustache. Who was it we had in here the other day? Who was it came in? I've gone right out of my head. Who was it? Oh, yeah, that was him, Engelbert Humperdinck. <laughs> he came in for an estimate on his sideboard. <laughs> Here's my astrakhan collar. More hair on that. <laughs> there, sir, now how's that for you? <laughs> no pleasing some folk, is there? <laughs> Ladies' dresses, you know. Oh, yeah. Mind you, this women's lips killed this trade, I'm telling you. We had this woman here the other day from women's lips. She bought a see through blouse. I'm not kidding you. When she put it on, it just looked like two ferrets fighting in a polythene bag. <laughs> and this is a nice number, isn't it? I think it's really nice, this, don't you? I think I'll reserve this for Everard. <laughs> Oh, there you are. Do you know, I'm worn out doing that. I'll never forget the first time I, I was in a ballet. Oh, it was marvellous. The critic said I reminded him of Rackle Welsh. Mind you, I always did have knobbly knees. <laughs> then I did the Swan Lake. Mind you, I was more like a ruptured duck. <laughs> the one I really enjoyed so much, I really loved it. There was the one, Pineapple Poll. I did that with Apricot Lil, yes. We were like a couple of fruit salads. <laughs> I really am. I, I must take the weight off. Do you know, I've been doing commercials. I love doing commercials. I really do. I've just done one for puff weed. <laughs> and next week I'm doing this one for aftershave lotion, you know, where that bird comes in and hammers you with karate chops. I can't wait for that. But the one I'm doing this afternoon, that's it's so exciting, it really is. I'm in a loincloth running through the jungle with a string bag full of nuts. <laughs> chatting here all day. I must go. It's lovely to see you all, and I love you all dearly. Bye-bye. I love you all. Shut that door. Okay, a Merry Christmas, and I love you. And what a good thing. <laughs> but do you know I'm warm now? I've come out of a hot flood. Is it warm or is it me? I think it's gone very humid. Our producer looks warm over there, because he does wear a vest. <laughs> well, that's for a fact. But anyway, I must wash my hair. It's gone all limp. I keep saying I'll stay in one night and do the end. <laughs> but ladies and gentlemen, if I wanted to be with a lovely young lady on Christmas Day, who lovelier than our very own... Agnes Alice. Alice and... <laughs> Good 
isn't she lovely? Merry Christmas, Isla. Oh, thank you, Larry. And a happy Christmas to you. I bought you a present. Oh, well, I hope it's better than ever on. <laughs> well, he bought me Action Man, and unfortunately, the batteries were flat. <laughs> <laughs> what? She's lovely, isn't she? What's your present? Well, I notice you have a lot of difficulty with your spectacles. Mm. Oh, yes, I get into more tangles than a ferret in a string vest. <laughs> well, try these. You put them on the end of your nose. Oh, there's a novelty. <laughs> well, you get, go and get the first contestants, and I'll have a go with these. Oh, no, no. I can't see anything clinging to me, can you? <laughs> See, it's a thought that counts. Well, Isla, who are our first two contestants tonight, love? Uh, well, Lal, the names in the frames are Bjorn and Agneta, who are going to play Benny and Frida. Well, aren't they lovely? No, see, that applause, it just shows you how lovely you are. And I believe, you, I believe you're from Sweden. Yes, yeah, that's right. right. Just a minute, I've got something on me here. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it lovely they come from Sweden? We've got two Swedish au pairs. Never <laughs> <laughs> mind, suit yourselves. Anyway, I'll just check your details. Now, um, you can wear blue. Yeah. Some people can't, but you can. <laughs> <laughs> he seems like a nice boy. <laughs> Which one are you? I'm Bjorn. Bjorn. Now yeah. that's a, Bjorn. That's a very popular name for babies in Sweden, isn't it? Yeah, they say there's one Bjorn every minute. <laughs> He's going to be trouble, isn't he? You can see that. Now, um, it says something here about Dancing Queen. Now, which one is the dan... <laughs> which one... <laughs> no, I, I can't do it if you make me laugh. I've heard that somewhere before. <laughs> um, which one is the Dancing Queen? That's one of our songs. Oh, oh, is it really? Oh, what a disappointment. <laughs> there goes my novelty, Okie Koki. <laughs> now, what other songs have you done? Take a chance on me. Oh, he's... <laughs> Isn't he forward? He is. Yes, very forward. Now, it says here also that you're Agneta, and you're lovely. You are lovely. Thank yes. you. Uh, and it says you've been playing the piano since you were six. Yes, and that I'm exhausted. Well, you would be, would you? <laughs> Well, it's poking me. <laughs> you seem to know a lot about us. Oh, no. oh, oh, lo do you have lovely red hair? Is that Gloria Swanson? <laughs> no, yes, I do, and I know you're Benny. That's right. Yeah, I love you in Crossroads. <laughs> now, listen, I'd like to just ask you a question. Do they know me in Sweden? Oh, oh yes. yes. Sure. Oh, do they really? Everybody in Sweden does your catchphrases. Really? Such as? Uh, what a gay day. <laughs> Shut the door. <laughs> Look at the muck in here. Of course, I must wash my hair. <laughs> oh, if you put music to that, they'd have another hit record. <laughs> anyway, I think you're lovely. I love you very much. Now, would you like to get yourselves over there and get okay, ready? And we'll tell you, you what to do. I'm a lovely TB. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Isla Love, could you tell us what the game is? Well, Larry, the four contestants in the Generation game tonight have to imagine that they're a singing group. Well, of course, they don't have to imagine because they're one of the world's most popular singing groups, and I love them. I know you love them. Millions do. Abba. Good evening. We welcome a guest to the studio tonight that you've all asked to see once again. He's arrived in this country from America. Ladies and gentlemen, meet Liberace. <laughs> Thank you, a lovely audience. <laughs> you know, they deserve me. <laughs> yes, well, now... Uh... By the way, Mr. Cameraman, don't forget to get my good side. And which side is that? Both of them. 
Do you like the rings, girls? Hey? Do you like them? The, each one was a gift from an adoring admirer. Who? Me. <laughs> well, you certainly seem to be wearing rather a lot. Yet, you know, last time I went into a bar, I ordered a scotch on the rocks and the barman poured the drink over my hands. <laughs> <laughs> Gee, you Tell me, uh, don't you find that wearing such valuable rings, uh, some people get a little uh, jealous? Yeah, do you know, I've been mugged twice. By who? Elizabeth Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, I think we'll forget the rings for a moment. Uh, let me talk about you. Do you know, that's my second favorite subject. And what's the first? Me talking about me. <laughs> if I'm correct, the last time you were here, it was for a Royal Command performance, is that right? Oh, gee, that was great. That really was at your London Palladium. And it was so, it was so thrilling. This wonderful person arrived just before the show. And, oh, and, and pearls and diamonds and furs. You mean Her Majesty? She looked very nice as well. She really <laughs> I'm talking about Danny LaRue. <laughs> and, uh, tell me, did you, did you speak to uh, Majesty afterwards? No, unfortunately, I sent for her, but she didn't show up. <laughs> tell me, uh, uh, do you, uh, will you be buying anything while you're here? Oh, yeah, I'm going to get my brother-in-law, George, a chemistry set. Oh, really? I see I. <laughs> oh, gee, that's so lovely. You really are. I'm also going to get myself a new piano. A grand? I don't care what it costs, I'm telling you. <laughs> and what's wrong with your present piano? Well, unfortunately, the ivories are yellow. Why is that? The elephant was a very heavy smoker. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much, Liberace, for joining us tonight. It's really been wonderful talking to you. And before really you go, right. would you like to uh, introduce our next guest for us? Oh, gee, you mean somebody's going to try and follow me? Oh, isn't that really something? I'd love to do that, I would. You know, what are their names? The Reflections. Oh, that reminds me. I've just, uh, well, I'm just getting over a very, very passionate, broken love affair. Oh, really? Uh, what happened? I dropped my mirror. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Danny. Robert. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, here they are, Reflections. <laughs> everybody. <laughs> I'm just throwing a little Christmas party, you know, nothing fancy, just a cozy little get-together for 4,000 of my very closest friends. <laughs> and just before you arrived, we were all pulling crackers, and you should have seen the one that Tom Jones pulled. She was absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> but the rest of us just pulled the same old crackers that you did. And look what I got. <laughs> and that came out of the end where you don't win anything. <laughs> and if you think that's neat, wait till you see the funny party hat. <laughs> this is what you get if you practice. <laughs> I wonder who that could be. Well, look who's arrived, everybody. It's Johnny Mathis. Well, Johnny, it's good to see you. Well, thank you, Lee. Thank you very much. Wow, what a beautiful house you have here. Okay, I'm glad you like it. Now you're here, Johnny. Would you like a guided tour through all the rooms in the house? Well, will it take very long? No, there's a flight leaving in ten minutes. <laughs> By the way, John, I bought you a Christmas present. Wow. Yeah. A wonderful set of golf clubs. Well, I did, you, how did you know I was keen on golf? These are beautiful. Uh, you got golf clubs yourself? Oh, yeah, I got three. Have you? Woods, irons, putter? No, no, no. Went with Sunningdale and Glen Eagles. <laughs> Brought them over here and took them to the States with me. Well, that figures. Uh, listen, maybe we can play 18 holes tomorrow, huh? Well, that all depends. Uh, what's your handicap? By the sound of it, Lee, you. <laughs> 
<laughs> Look, I tell you what, Johnny, if you sing with me at my party tonight, mm -hmm. I'll play golf with you tomorrow. I've got a better idea. I'll sing on my own tonight, and you play golf on your own tomorrow. <laughs> oh, Jay, wasn't that cute? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the wonderful and talented Mr. Johnny Mathis. And welcome once more to Mastermind. Our first contestant this evening is Mr. Frank Spencer. <laughs> Mr. Spencer, are you comfortable? Yes. I got that one right, Betty. <laughs> Mr. Spencer, I will ask you a number of questions, and if you are unable to answer them, you will say I pass. Do you understand? Do you mind repeating the question? <laughs> I said, I will ask you a number of questions, and if you are unable to answer, you will say, I pass. Now, is that clear? I pass. <laughs> no, Mr. Spencer, that was not one of the questions. <laughs> Quotations. Mm -hmm. Who was it said, give me the tools and I will finish the job? Betty, when we had a puncher on debate <laughs> Wrong, Mr. Spencer. I know it's wrong. We should have been going to Brighton. We got lost. <laughs> Another quotation. Hmm. Who was it that said, A horse, a horse, my kingdom for a horse? Betty, when we had a puncher on the way to Brighton. <laughs> well, Mr. Spencer, will you try to concentrate on the question? Hmm. Now, apart from Betty on the way to Brighton, <laughs> who was it that said, A horse, a horse, my kingdom for a horse? Hmm. <laughs> was it Mark Phillips? <laughs> no, I'm afraid it wasn't, Mr. Spencer. Does it mean that I get four folks for that? Will you sit down, Mr. Spencer? Well, there's no need to lose your temper. I can't help it. I've had a lot of harassment today. The budget did a whoopsie on the carpet. <laughs> Don't like these leather chairs. Mr. Spencer. Hmm. Give me a four-letter word that describes an ungentlemanly advance towards a young lady. Pass. Pass. I'm terribly sorry. I must accept your first answer. What is the world's largest known land mammal? Cyril Smith. <laughs> television. On which day is the television program stars on Sunday scene? Monday. <laughs> How did you work that out? Well, our set takes a long time to warm up. <laughs> Since I fixed it. And now, a three-part question on football. Oh, could I have the third part of the question first, please? Well, I think you'd find that very difficult, Mr. No, Spencer. No, you see, you don't understand. No, but if you have the third part... The three is my lucky number. No, I may be that as it may, if no, you I have must the third have... part first. You see, it, it... I've got to have the third part of the question first. <laughs> Mr. Spencer! Please, let me have the third part of the question first. It's lucky for me. Very well, Mr. Spencer, if you insist. Hmm, I do. <laughs> On football, hmm, the third part of the question first... Which player scored the goal? <laughs> Another three-part question. Could I have the first part first? <laughs> I thought you might. Hmm. If a herd of lions is a pride and a flock of geese is a gaggle, what is a group of turkeys? A load of gobblers. <laughs> A group of overweight people? A load of wobblers. And a group of shoemakers? A load of... Oh, that's rude! 
I don't want to do rude things. I'll say rude things. Congratulations, Mr. Spencer. You are now the new brain of Britain. Oh, bet you will be pleased. <laughs> What a lovely welcome. You really are lovely, all you. What can I say? I mean, nice to see you, to see you. Uh... Nice. Well, I'm the leader of the pack, which makes me such a lucky jack. If anyone cracks a joke, I'll trump it. We've got loads of prizes and bags of... <laughs> <laughs> but now, let's meet our contestants. Yes, it's very nice of you to invite us. Well, welcome to the show, both of you. Yeah, I, I believe it's Charles and Diana, is that right? And yes, what a pleasure it is for both of us to be actually appearing on 321. 321? This is play your cards, right? Oh, I'm dreadfully sorry. We thought you were that other man. Well, uh, do I look like Ted Rogers? No, but you do look like Dusty Bin. Oh, I see, yeah. We've got a comedian on the show, haven't we? Really? Where? I can see it's going to be one of those nights. Fetch me pills. Yeah, the pink ones. Just in bin, for goodness sake. Now, tell us something about yourself. Charles, uh, what do you do? I'm the Prince of Wales. Oh, yes, yeah, very nice. Yeah. Just a minute, if you're the Prince of Wales, then this must be the Princess of Wales. What an honour. I do think it's marvellous to have some people here with real class to bring the show up to my level. <laughs> yes. Now tell us, Charles, do you enjoy being a member of the royal family? Well, it's a living. <laughs> <laughs> Jolly good. And tell me, do you have any children? Don't you read the newspapers? As a matter of fact, my wife had wills just over 18 months ago. Oh, lovely. And are you hoping for another one soon? Well... I'd rather not say. Oh, I see. It sounds as if you're keeping mum. No, she's quite capable of keeping herself, actually. <laughs> I see. Uh, tell me, what about the royal baby? Does he ever watch me on television? Yes. If he's been especially naughty. <laughs> right, well, I think we'd better play the game. Now, remember, the more points you get, the bigger the prizes you get. Because points make prizes. What are points, May? <laughs> We've got some marvellous prizes on offer tonight. We've got a goblin tea maker, just a job if you're having goblins for tea. <laughs> We've also got a lovely music centre you could win. Charles has already bought me a music centre. Oh, really? Yes, the Albert Hall. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then let's have a look at tonight's star prize. about that very sporty i can tell you and she goes like a bomb the car's pretty jiffy as well <laughs> oh, the car's rather nice isn't it dear yes it's just what i need for getting round the kitchen <laughs> now then let's get on with the game to start with i'm going to give you 200 points i usually ask you a question and give you 50 points but as you are who you are i'll give you 50 points anyway <laughs> Now, let's have a look at the cards. Now remember, if you get 4,000 points by the time you reach here, you have a chance to go for the car. Right, let's have a look at your base card. Thank you, Nicky. Right, a jack now, a good card. What do you want to do? 200 left. Lower than a jack, you say? Yes, three of diamonds. Now, you've got 450 points. What do you want to do now? We go 400 higher. 400 higher. Queen of diamonds, yes, very good, yes. Now, you've got 850 points, we'll give you 200 points. So now you've got 1,050 points. Right, now you can change this card if you want to. Uh, yes, I think so. It's not a very good likeness, is it? Oh, yeah, yeah, see what you mean, yeah. If you brought the whole family along, we could have had a game of snap. <laughs> right, well, we change this card. Thank you, Nicky. Oh, and it's a very good card. Now, what do you want to do next? What do you think? Um, you decide. Well, 
800 now. 800 lower than an ace, you say? Yeah, uh, four of diamonds, yes. Now you've got 1,850 points. What are you going to do now? Uh, the, 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 um, 1,000 higher. Higher than a four, you say? It's the six of clubs. Now remember, you've only got one more card to get 4,000 for a chance for the car. Uh, 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 1,150 higher. Ah, now then, you've got 4,000 points. Yes, now on the turn of this card, you could win tonight's star prize, the car. Whoa! What do you say? Uh, uh, lower, lower, lower. Lower. lower than a king for the car. believe that dear oh dear well never mind we've got a nice consolation prize for each of you now for you my love a Barry Manilow album and for you sir a surprise present we've decided that you've already got a horse so inside that box is something that's going to be very useful when you're riding it a safety harness <laughs> but don't forget it can still be a big night tonight if you play your cards right good night Please don't switch off. <laughs> I'm not a garden gnome. <laughs> uh, I wanted to be, but I failed the audition. Uh, I was too small. Anyway, uh, this week, this week, uh, that's uh, this week, my, uh, that's three weeks already. Uh, <laughs> this week, my joke is about holidays. And last year, we went to Africa on safari. Uh, anyway, we flew over there by African Airlines on a mumbo-jumbo jet. <laughs> and, uh, and I think the pilot must have been afraid of heights, because 30 minutes after we took off, he was booked for speeding on the M1. <laughs> but during, uh, during, uh, during the flight, the navigator let me sit next to him, uh, not because he liked me, but just simply because I was the only one on board that knew what Africa looked like from the air. <laughs> anyway, we finally got to Africa, and I must be the unluckiest holiday maker in the world, because when I sat down to rest right in the middle of the Sahara Desert, I got caught by a deck chair attendant. <laughs> all of which, all of which brings me to my experience with this camel. There I was, no, there I was in the desert, and I got on the camel, but I couldn't get it to move. I, I shouted G up, but it was no good. And then this fellow came up to me and he said, uh, what seems to be the trouble, mate? Like that. I mean, that, that's not an impression of it. I mean, I mean, even if it was an impression, you wouldn't know whether it was any good or not, because you probably never met this fellow. <laughs> I mean, personally, I don't think this is a very good impression of me. I, <laughs> I said, it's the camel, it absolutely refuses to move. And he said, if you get off, I think I can help you. So I got off the camel and this chap said, I'll get it to move for you. And then he proceeded to tickle the camel's bottom. <laughs> and then the camel bolted at, uh, about 30 miles an hour away, like that, about 30 miles an hour. And this fellow said, that's all you have to do to make the camel move, tickle its bottom. And I said, well, you better tickle mine because I've got to catch it. Jesus. 
in the wrong play. <laughs> well, I'll just leave it there. Put it back. All right. I forgot to duck. <laughs> <laughs> Happy anniversary. <coughs> Been a year, isn't it? Seems more like ten. Don't be like that. I got your card, special. Oh. <laughs> Congratulations on your new baby. <laughs> hmm. That's the only one they had, except get well soon. <laughs> In the circumstances, it might have been more appropriate. I've got some flowers as well. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> Where are the heads? On the platform at Cockfoster. <laughs> See, when the man said, mind the doors, I didn't. <laughs> Honestly, Frank, you are clumsy. And I bet you forgot to pick up the anniversary cake. No, I didn't. I'm not an idiot. <laughs> Where is it, then? On the platform at Cox. <laughs> With the daffodils. Oh, Frank, how could you? See, I, I was trying to save your anniversary present. Oh, present? What is it? I bought myself dumb. <laughs> in oils. <laughs> Do you like it? Where's the head? Well, it's on the, on the platform, platform at Cockfasters. <laughs> See, I put my foot through it, trying to save the cakes. Still in mind, it, it'll hide this damp patch on the wall. Can't get it up. <laughs> oh, look, bullseye. <laughs> I've been framed. <laughs> oh, honestly, Frank, the only thing we've got right about this anniversary is the champagne, and that's because I got it. Hmm, I like champagne, I'll open it. Oh, no, no, I will. No, I know what I'm doing. No. Oh. Oh. know what I'm doing. No, don't point it at me, Frank. That glue was dry. <laughs> oh, no, Frank, now don't point it at the ceiling. You know how old these houses are. Oh, Sorry, <laughs> out. <laughs> Got kicking it, hasn't it? <laughs> Use one of my forty niners. <laughs> oh, Frank, I hope you defrosted it. Mm, I did. What with? Eight boxes of matches and a fire lighter. <laughs> oh, Frank, <laughs> give it to me. What's that? What's that? That. Some of your mother's old threatening bits. But they're supposed to go in the pudding. I know, but I couldn't open the tin. <laughs> Why, what's the matter with the tin opener? I used it to try and defrost the turkey. <laughs> oh, Frank, a fine turkey this is going to be. Full of conkers and threatening bits and... 
there's a bicycle clip in there. <laughs> I've been looking for that. <laughs> oh, Frank. And what have you done with the giblets? I left them here in the saucer. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong? I had them on toes for my tea. <laughs> The toast. <laughs> You'd better let me do it. No, let me do it. I just got a singe a few of the hairs off the turkey. <laughs> hairs? Mm. But it's an oven ready turkey. It should be bald. Mm, I know, Betty, but you see, when I put the cooking oil on, all the hairs came off my shaving brush. <laughs> oh, Frank, let me do it. No, let me do it, Betty. I know what I'm doing. Oh, now be careful, Frank. Betty, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> lighter out. Space, a final frontier. These are the voyages of the starship Enterprise. Well, hello, and welcome to the Starship Enterprise. Well, uh, we've been travelling through space, and on the way we stopped at the Great Bear and the Plough and other well-known pubs. Now, <laughs> I've been compiling the Captain's Log, or Old Moore's Almanac, as I like to call it. <laughs> and uh, we've discovered that uh, we are searching for one particular planet, Earth. And there is a good reason for this. We're lost. <laughs> you see, originally we were making for this planet here until I discovered it was a drawing pin holding up the chart. <laughs> I think you'll find this, I think you'll find, I think you'll find this all very, very interesting. So, so do pay attention because I've got my eye on you. Captain, we have sighted a man police box to starboard. We think it's Doctor Who. Well, either that or we're sticks of Doc Green, in which case we're flying much lower than I thought we were. Where's Mr. Spock? Word, it, it's Bunce Bunny. <laughs> I did warn you what would happen if you kept eating all that lettuce, didn't I? Captain, seeing as we've come this far, I think we might as well make for the moon. Do you both agree? Here, here. Aye, aye. <laughs> There's just one thing, Captain. The radiation on the moon. Do you think there'll be any danger of fallout? Not if you keep your top button fastened. <laughs> We're approaching the moon fast. Good. Put up a shot of it. My word, look at that. Those holes are enormous. They look like Des O'Connor's dimples. <laughs> Those holes appear to have been freshly dug. Well, in that case, the cats on the moon are much bigger than I thought they were. <laughs> look, when we do arrive on the moon, I shall go and investigate. But, Captain, do you think you'll be able to do that funny weightless moonwalking? I'd do anything to get a laugh. <laughs> we're now above the moon. Really? Hmm. Uh, Taxi, is there any life? Yes, I can see a group of big hairy monsters. Don't tell me Herman's hermits are on tour again. That's <laughs> not nice. Captain, I'm suddenly scared. I'm trembling all over. Yes, yes, so, so am I. Are you scared too? No, your top button's undone again. <laughs> but Captain, you don't understand. I'm allergic to things that are covered in hair. Yes, but of course this is all very understandable. We can't all be Rolf Harris fans, can we? <laughs> Stand by for a moon landing. I'll go and check so it's all clear. My word. What is it, Captain? Well, it's some sort of telescope, actually. I'm not sure. I, I'm sure, um, I'm sure James Burke would know. I, 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 oh, I see what you mean, yes. Well, uh, this, it's a 
amazing, really. It is quite amazing, this, because, you see, they always said that there, there was a man on the moon. And, and, you know, by golly, they're quite right. Look. Give me the moonlight, give me the girl, and leave the rest to me.